Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is Mariah, and today we are going to be talking about cussing and we're going to be talking about the tongue and all those things so um we have two people in the podcast with me right now we have christy debdu hey everyone and we have david catalano all right so like we did last time david is going to explain david has a lot of time right now so he's been <laughs> the one it is true. preparing and we are here to listen and learn and to give our input but ultimately we are just excited for you guys to just hear our thoughts and also not our thoughts but ultimately what's the most important what the bible says about our language so david take it away Absolutely. So thank you guys for having me on again. I think I'd encourage everyone to be studying the Bible. And when you get questions or the Lord convicts you on things to study the Bible even more and realize, wow, there are things that God wants to change in my life. And this was something that I was studying and I realized, man, like I really can work on taming my tongue a little bit more and can really work on my heart in terms of how I conduct myself in speech. And I thought I would share some of the things that I've been studying with the word. So um, we're going to be using a verse today as kind of the topic um, that we're going to be using to kind of go into the rest of what we're talking about today. And so we're going to start with Matthew 12, 34 through 37, and I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. It says, Broad of vipers, this is Jesus speaking, how can you brood of vipers? got to work on your tongue. Uh, <laughs> well, i got to work my language. <laughs> Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? This is a huge one we often say a lot. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mm. A good man, out of the good treasures of his heart, brings forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasures, brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. And I was reading that verse and I was like, whoa, like the way that we talk is serious business. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it talks about that in James 1 as well. I think it's James 1 or in James. But it talks about how our, our tongue is like a rudder. I mean, it can, it can cause destruction and fire. It can light things on fire, but it also can be a, a springing well of life. And I kind of wanted to talk about today just the, the principle that what we speak out of the abundance of of our heart, the mouth speaks. And when we speak certain things, the conduct and the language that we speak shows what resides in our heart. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to take an evaluation of our heart and really look at training our tongue and more importantly, our heart to really glorify God with the way that we speak. And so, you know, the way that pure speech, I believe, leads to a pure life. Like that is something that we can take and be intentional about working on. You know, I can, I can wake up in the morning and go, okay, I really want to work on making sure my speech glorifies God more. And I think that's what this topic is about. It's not about, okay, this is the cuss word you can't use, and this is what you're not supposed to do. And Here's and the here's cuss the words laws. you can use. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Christian cuss, cuss words, words no. right? <laughs> no. So, but I think this, this is more about evaluating your language and saying, wow, I, I think there are some roots of my heart things in my heart that I really need to give to God and work on and be intentional about training in righteousness. And so we're going to talk about these things. And I just want to say this, right? So a lot of people tell me, right? Because a lot of people struggle with cussing and not just cussing, but the things we're going to talk about, because I may not use curse words, but I definitely, you know, speak in a way that does not glorify God sometimes. And I think the important thing to know is if we're not controlling our tongue, then who is, right? What is controlling our tongue, especially when, when I get angry and I, my fuse goes off, I'm not controlling my tongue. And that's mm -hmm. a scary thing because mm -hmm. things can come out of my mouth that can really hurt people, that can really cause a fire. And I think that's why as Christians, it's really important, as James said, it's really important that we look, notice what's coming out of our tongue and try to tame the tongue. So 
before we start, I actually wanted to define what cussing is. So the word cussing is really interesting. It, it comes from the word cursing, right? Um, someone said that in, in the old English, it also comes from customer and it was short for cuss or it comes from like annoying animal. But at the end of the day, 1848 is when cussing and cursing kind of they came together. And so cussing and cursing are very similar. And so just think about that. Whenever we curse, we're saying curses, which is probably not what God wants us to do, right? He doesn't want us cursing, right? Cursing his creation, cursing people, just having profane cursing, you know? And I think that's really important that cursing is not good. You know, it's a curse. And we need to be speaking blessings. We need to be speaking language that is edifying. Again, mm -hmm. that, that does mean we can speak truth and love that is hard to hear, mm -hmm. but it's always to edify. It's always to build up. And so um, Ephesians 4.29 is the verse and kind of the principle I want to point to. And it says, let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good for necessary edification or building up, mm -hmm. that it may impart grace to the hearers. And if we're going to be Christians that are serious about Christ because we're all going to be held accountable for our words, then we need to be a people that really take seriously what words we're saying. And really, I think the most important thing is not to just say, okay, I shouldn't do this, I shouldn't do this, but really say, okay, my, my language could be more edifying. There are areas of my life where my language is not edifying. So with that, uh, what kind of cursing or cussing is there? So I was going through the Bible and I was pulling up some different topics in terms of uh, different uh, definitions of what kind of cursing there is. And I came up with seven. We like seven here because that's the number of completion. Mm -hmm. um, and I just want to kind of list them real quick and then we're going to go into each one of them pretty quick. So the first one is anger, right? Saying things out of anger. The next one's profanity or swearing. Uh, the third one is lying. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about more about that one. Criticism and condemnation, slander, uh, go uh, gossiping. Those are all kind of the same thing. We just call it criticism, like a critical spirit. Mm -hmm. uh, grumbling and complaining. Um, foolish talk, jesting. Uh, what I'm really going to say is crudely making fun of people. Like it's not, it's not bad to kind of make jokes and things like that. But when we're doing it in a crude way that actually hurts people, we're going to talk about that. And the last is foul talk. So with that, we're going to start kind of talking about each one. I'm going to try and define each one. I'm going to kind of try to sh say what it's like and then kind of explain maybe what the root is. So and what about where would, um, like, say in the Lord's name in vain, where would you put that? So that's profanity. profanity. And then yeah. idle words, where would that be? Idle words? Like, like just when it says to not have any idle words. Oh, like that words that are kind of, well, that would be foolish Look talk, foolish. which literally mm, means we're going to talk about that. Yeah, foolish okay. talk. Just like, why would you say something like that? Mm. So, um, so with that, you say that to David a lot. Yeah. Like, okay. <laughs> I, like that? I said, I struggle <laughs> with these things. Like nobody should be talking that way. Right. Nope. So first let's start with anger. Right. And I'm pretty sure many of you watching this, I know I struggle with this. Sometimes I get angry and then things come out of my mouth, like in bitterness, mm. um, that should never have come out of my mouth and they can really hurt people. And so uh, the way I would explain is it's having a short fuse, bitterness, acting out of hatred or malice. It's hatred towards someone, right? And even if that's for a moment, right? That's why Jesus says if you even hate your brother, it's like murder, right? Mm. So again, I know a lot of us have had that struggle when we get angry. I know I got angry the other day and I was so tempted in my anger to let out words that would have been very bad, that would have been really dirty because it was just I was like, whoa. And I had to like mm. sit and take a moment to breathe and pray to God because I felt these this feeling in my throat of the anger wanting to release words that I should not say. And so I think it's a scary thought. And the verse I have for that one is Ephesians 4, 26 through 27. It says, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry for anger gives a foothold for the devil. Mm -hmm. And that really mm -hmm. hit me. It's the idea that when we get angry and we will get angry, right? And there are, there is righteous anger. God got anger uh, for the righteous reasons, right? But we have to be careful that we don't let that anger control us. Because when we let that anger and that bitterness control us, when we let that hatred towards someone or a situation control us, we give the enemy a foothold to now use the rudder of our mouth to, to cause destruction. You know, I faced that the other day. I was trying to uh, fix something in my house. I got really mad and I started uh, breaking it with, you know, I started hitting it, you know, and sometimes I think, when we get mad, we begin to use forceful words that can be really mean and they're not very uh, kind. And 
I think that's one thing that we have to realize with our language. Again, you may not even be using a curse word, but you could be saying something that is really sharp and really, you could snap at people, right? And we, we need to look at that and realize, okay, maybe I can't control it when it initially happens, but we are able by Christ to work on training ourselves mm -hmm. through the Holy Spirit not to snap at people, not to all of a sudden let angry words come out. Yeah. We are able to have like one of the fruits of the spirit is self-control. And I think that's really important that, you know, there's bit of, the other thing is the reason we might get angry so easily also is because we are holding on to bitterness. And I think we need to be practicing forgiveness and we need to be pursuing God to not be angry people, but rather have self-control and really have a heart that cares about people. And so again, I think that anger is rooted in a heart of vengeance and bitterness. It's almost like we want to reciprocate or we want to take control and that's why we get so sharp and forceful. And so that's the first one is anger. The next one is profanity and swearing. So I'm going to just, uh, the idea of profanity is like to profane a name means like to lift it up. But profanity is when we take something that's holy and we treat it like it's common and unholy. Mm -hmm. Like when the people say the Lord's name in vain, yeah. like, oh my God, right? They're, they're taking like God's name should be respected. Like I shouldn't just say his name flamboyantly like, oh, you know, you know, yeah, like you know, way. or I shouldn't just make promises like here and there and just be like, oh, I, I promise, you know, I, I promise I'm going to kill you. You know, I mean, those that's also profane and it's profanity. It's swearing, right? It's mm -hmm. this idea of making, you know, making uh, commitments that you're not really going to fulfill or that, that shouldn't be made. You know, oh, I promise I'm going to kill you or like, ah, oh, you know, you know, that's why I like, uh, you know, when it says like, kill it, you know, I mean, I was going to say the D word, right? It's this idea of like swearing, like I'm going to kill that, you know? And I think, mm. again, the heart behind that is we just need to realize that. And things can be known as profanity too, when you're using dirty language, because you're pretty much saying like, hey, I don't really respect God. So I'm just going to talk yeah. with my mouth, whatever I want to say. Yeah, perversion. Perversion. Yeah. It's, it's twisting God's language. It's causing disorder. It's talking about perverted things, you know? And so... I think the verse I have for that is Hebrews 10, 29. And this is actually just, it, it go, expands past language, but I think it really like humbles me when I think of language. It says, just think how much is the new living. Just think how much worse the punishment will be for those who have trampled on the Son of God and treated the blood of the covenant which made us holy as if it were common and unholy mm. and have insulted and disdained the Holy Spirit who brings God's mercy to us. And I think about that like, when we say the Lord's name in vain or we yeah. speak in a way that kind of just makes God's name like common and unholy, especially the way we use it, that's really insulting to God. And we should take that very serious to go, okay, like I need to not use language in that way. I need to not profane God's name in that way. And I also mm -hmm. need to watch my language. The other one is Exodus 20 verse 7. Yeah, it says, yeah. Uh, again, this new living, it says, you must not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The mm -hmm. Lord will not let you go unpunished if you misuse his name. Mm -hmm. And that also goes with swearing. Like, I promise to God that, or I promise to so-and-so and things like that. Yeah. The The Bible says, I think we just, uh, mm -hmm. Pastor Craig just talked about that this Sunday. Mm -hmm. Let your yes be yes and your no be no. I, there's no reason we should be swearing mm -hmm. by anything. Because that yeah. that's using God's name for selfish gain. Hey, I'm going to use, I'm going to promise on God's name so that you trust me more. Yeah. That's, that's not how God's name should be used. And we should take that seriously. Yeah. The next one is lying. So, uh, lying, I want to emphasize this. So a lot of people think like, Oh, well I didn't lie, but lying is just more than lie. just, yeah, like a white lie, right? Lying is more than just going against the truth. Lie can also be manipulating or twisting the truth. Mm. Yeah. And I think one thing I really learned about lying is there are many reasons we lie, but some of the reasons we lie, the reason that it's rooted in lying is number one for personal gain, right? Maybe we want to look good. Maybe we want to gain something, right? Uh, I've seen people, again, they're like, I didn't lie. But again, they twisted the truth in order to make somebody believe something in order to gain something, yeah. to manipulate them. I'll use mm -hmm. a good example of this, yeah. right? A lot of men manipulate women into believing that, they're actually Christians mm -hmm. in order to sleep with them. Again, they're using God's name or they're, they're portraying an image that they believe something that they don't really believe in mm -hmm. order to manipulate someone to get what they want. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's, that's a very serious thing we, we need to be careful about, you know, is not manipulating the truth. And that can be even like mm -hmm. you were saying, right, a white lie, 
you know, like, even if it's like, I, I'm catching that, like, even if it's like, oh, you know, did you, did you, uh, did you drink all your coffee? And it's like, no, you know, but I really did, you know, even though it's like, why would that be? But I think we should be serious. You know, if we're not faithful to little things, like if we can't, if we don't feel, uh, if we don't feel that conviction in, in lying about the little things, then it's just going to slowly grow. And then we're going to mm -hmm. take an inch by inch and, mm -hmm. and line the bigger things, you know? And so the other thing I think that is hard, and I see this with discipling people a lot, is a lot of people twist the truth for self-preservation. They don't want people to look at them differently. Mm. Um, and so like when I talk to people, it's like, oh, like, so what happened? Well, you know, I was hanging out with the guy and we were alone and nothing really happened. And it's like, oh, okay, you know, but they're kind of twisting the truth because they don't want us to view them differently. And I think mm -hmm. we need to fear God more than people knowing things about us. Again, we don't need to share every detail, but... It's like, hey, David, did you, you know, did you not set put things away properly during setup? It's like, well, you know, I can try to manipulate the truth in order to preserve me looking mm -hmm. bad. But I think it's better for me just to own up to it. And I think that's one thing we need to really realize with our speech and our conduct. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. another one, too, of, of lying is flattery, like saying something that isn't true just to make someone feel better. That's mm -hmm. something that we can do and that's lying like don't say it if you don't mean it like don't say oh they you look really good when deep down you're like oh they don't look at it all but i wouldn't tell them and i think a lot of times we're trying to protect other people we don't want to hurt them but like the saying if you have nothing nice to say don't say it at all which we need to get back to that um another way of lying was in acts five with ananias and sapphira they basically said that they the property the money they got from property they sold that was the full amount but it wasn't and then they were killed <laughs> like they died yeah. and so just to take lying and not telling the whole truth and trying to protect yourself or not wanting to get in trouble take that serious that you're not just hurting others you're hurting god and also the reason why ananias and sapphira died was because to put fear into the whole church like this is serious mm -hmm. and and so anyway, that's another story I can think of. Yeah, well. and I, I think that's a good example, you know. And again, that goes with manipulating. Yeah. They wanted to manipulate the congregation to make themselves look holier. Okay. Yeah. You know? and, and I think, again, if we change that as a church, like the church, I mean, God would really move through us more if we, if we were really willing to be honest in that way. Mm -hmm. And the verse, again, that goes with that is Exodus 20, verse 16 so. in the New King James. It says, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor again yeah. you shall not carry a false reality to your mm, neighbor amen. you know you should be living in the reality of god's reality or at least doing your best like give the best that you know because mm -hmm. if you like hey this is all i know and then it turns out not to be true but you were saying Humble it to the yourself. best intention that's different you weren't trying to manipulate you know yeah but yeah if you're like you know, saying, knowing that it's wrong. Did you have something to say? Yeah. Um, so I've seen people like Christians around me that say something and then like they correct themselves like, oh, these details weren't actually right. And I think that's respectable. Like if you do like say a white lie or a lie, like it's okay to be yeah. like actually exaggerated or, you yeah. know, it's okay to be honest. Like we all make mistakes, but just confess mm. it right away. And then you'll you still you'll feel lighter and yeah. yeah yeah i joke around with mireya and valerie we call it luking it which means lying because one time i said they were like oh so how was your quiet time with the lord i was like it was really good i i read luke and then right away the holy spirit was like no you listened to it and you weren't even really <laughs> listening like you're lying and so right away i remember in eg's um, and I was like, actually, I totally just lied there. I did not. And so I always joke like, oh, you're luking it. You need to stop. Like, be honest. Because some people even lie about what God spoke to them because they want to mm. act like they had this great time with the Lord. That's lying. Don't yeah. do that. Don't make things up. That isn't from the Lord. That, yeah, that's another way that you are misrepresenting God. That's not what he's saying. So anyway. And I just say like to go along with that as a coach and as someone that's discipled people in our church. I, the best student, the best athletes I've coached and the best disciples are the ones that are honest with me. Yeah. You know, that are like, hey, I'm, you know, and, and it's, I love that because we can always work through when they're honest with me. But I've had disciples that have lied to my face 
And then I find out later and I'm like, I would have helped you and come alongside you. And then it just gets bigger and bigger Mm -hmm. and they keep lying and lying. And then they start believing their lies. And like, that's why you have pathological liars because they, in order to be a good liar, you start believing your own lies. Like that used to to cover them up with other lies. Yeah. And like you were saying, you respect people who humble themselves. Mm -hmm. It might be like a month later. And this happens to Val and Mama Clet even where they're like, wait, I wasn't being fully honest or that wasn't right. And so they have to go back months later and the person is your member. She's done that to me before. And I'm like, okay, but it's because they want to be right with the Holy spirit. The Mm -hmm. point of all this too, is to be sensitive to the Holy spirit. We don't want to grieve the Holy spirit. We want to welcome him. And it's not about being religious. Like you can't say gosh, can't say G can't say crap. Like, no, we don't want to be Pharisees, but we want to welcome the Holy Spirit and Mm -hmm. we want to do our very best. Yeah. To just be sensitive to that. Yeah. To pursue purity, you Mm -hmm. know? And and again, I love that. Again, I was, I was a very pathological. I mean, I praise the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Now, like I get so convicted with like the small lies, and I'm like, why do I feel this way? And the Lord's like, but I praise the Lord. I'm like, thank you, Lord, that, that the old me of like, I could tell a lie without blinking an eye. And now it's like, you know, so if you are someone that, maybe has lied to a lot of people in your life and that's been like just know that god can change you and i believe that because he he absolutely changed my life so i encourage anyone that's been struggling with that to really make the choice to say god i don't want to be a manipulating liar anymore didn't you say one time like a way to um because sometimes people are like i can't trust you anymore because you lie all the time which that was me growing up my family would always say like i can't trust you're telling the truth so then i started saying what david was talking about i used to say like i promise before god and my mom was always like mariah don't say that and i would go to an extreme it was scary like thank you god for his favor and protection and not like striking me dead but i would say like god you can strike me dead and i was like i mean it and then i would like Even though I knew, I knew, I knew I was telling the truth. Like, what if he did? Like, what if that did happen? Because what if I I was deceiving myself? It's just, you don't want to test the Lord. You don't want to do that. And the point of it is, even if they don't believe you, like maybe for like years, because you lied so much, it takes a long time until people start believing Mm -hmm. you. Be okay with that. Like, just keep telling the truth and the Mm -hmm. Lord will honor you. God honors those who honor him. So just be faithful with that. Even if everyone else around you is like, I can't trust you the Lord is on your side and he will defend you. So continue to tell the truth for a long time. And then hopefully eventually people will, but if not, who cares? It's between you and God. Yeah. And like Esau, you know, it was like selling his birth. You know, God really does not like when we treat, like when we use his name in vain, again, using it to, Mm -hmm. to strengthen us, you know, and to go along with that, exactly like you were saying, that's, that's something I really learned is, it's better to take the hit and everybody to see the ugliness in you. Mm-hmm. And then through that, you just consistently be an honest person. And then I mm-hmm. promise you over the time, if you continue to be honest and continue to be vulnerable, God will lift you up eventually. Like yeah. trust, you know, trust takes a long time to earn. And it's better to start off on all honest ground. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. there's been people who've been wrongly accused of things and are in prison for years. And, even if that there's people today who are, I mean, there's stories of that and they come out eventually, but some people never do. I mean, think about it. Even the pastors um, who are in other countries who are wrongly accused of things or said uh, mm-hmm. just because they are following Christ. That's where if you are not even set free here on this earth, like the Lord will defend you. He will reward you. So that's where it, it is scary. What, the type of world we're living in where you can be canceled for anything. Like Mm -hmm. it's getting to a point where they're probably going to make it where anything we say that is biblical, they're going to say, Oh, you, we are going to arrest you for that. Or I mean, people are like, okay, that's not going to be for like 50, a hundred years, but we don't know. Like it's, it's so crazy out there where we need to just keep speaking the truth in love, not just because we want to be like mean to people, but we do care about their souls And so that's another thing of just making sure the things we're speaking, we're speaking boldly of the truth of Jesus and the gospel and the good news. And so letting our words be few, that's why I love that song, like, let my words be few, because I like to talk. And where it says where there's many words, sin is not far off. And I'm like, Mm. ooh, 
Ooh. Yep. So David and I struggle with talking. Christy is mm-hmm. someone who maybe doesn't talk <laughs> as much, but then the Lord is maybe convicting her at times to speak up and say yeah. things, and then he's telling us, right. be quiet and don't talk. <laughs> so mm-hmm. Yeah, and I just want to kind of go over those three things we talked about again. So things we can really work on as Christians are anger, profanity, and the last one is manipulation or lying. You know, and so I, I encourage you to really evaluate your life and say, where am I? Where am I doing that? And realize, man, God, this really hurts your heart. I need to be intentional about training and and uh, learning how to really overcome this through the power of the Holy Spirit. And Amen. His Word talks about that. So, yeah. moving on to the next uh, couple of uh, um, principles. The next one is criticism and condemnation. Mm-hmm. And so. This is a this one that really hit me, right? Because there are times we do need to be judgmental, right? There are things like, okay, if somebody is living a sexual sin that claims to be into a Christian, the world, that's a trigger word. I mean, even for me, when you said judgmental, I'm like, okay, whoa, that's a little intense. But we can judge other believers, mm-hmm. but we are not to judge the world because they are already judged by God. But for Christians and people who are calling themselves Christians, we can be fruit inspectors and say, hey, you're saying you're a Christ follower, but Christ's word says this and you're not following it. So here, here's this. But yeah. the world hears you say that. And what is the verse in Matthew 7, 1? Judge not lest you be judged. Mm-hmm. And they freak when they hear like, oh, Christians are so judgy, judgy. But yeah, so keep explaining that. Well, but. and to go along with that. So there, I like to separate you know, and it kind of goes with wording, right? But I like to separate the words judgment and condemnation, mm-hmm. right? So judgment, right? We judge every day, right? We evaluate. I like the word judgment is kind of like evaluate. Someone says they're Christian. They're doing something that's going against the word. I'm going to evaluate that and I'm going to see discrepancies. Where condemnation comes in is this idea that we now take, we can now judge them to hell or mm-hmm. judge them to punishment going, yeah. we are now trying to take the role of god in judging them to their eternity or mm-hmm. judging them to a specific punishment yeah right uh we're we're operating outside of our authority in that condemnation now again mm-hmm. again there like as a coach i can judge and provide discipline the the church leaders can judge and provide discipline there is an authority that God has given church leaders. There's an authority God has given me as a coach and a counselor. There's authority that you guys may have in your life over, you know, our brothers and sisters in Christ. But condemnation comes when we are trying to act out of that authority. But I also want to emphasize some things about condemnation is, again, it's this declaring a judgment of punishment or doom. And it, mm-hmm. it, it aims more to devalue or demean someone in order to tear them down. So like this idea of, I'll use an example, like if I'm talking to a brother that is sleeping with his girlfriend and he says, hey, I'm a Christian, I believe in the word of God. Well, to devalue him is to say, well, dude, like you're, you must be, you're the worst Christian ever. In fact, you're not saved. You're going to hell. Like, you know, you're such a horrible person. Like, so now I'm literally attacking him Mm. and trying to tear him down rather than showing him like, okay, man, like let's evaluate what's going on in your life compared to what the word says and saying, I love what uh, the Lord come up in my heart says, when we disagree with someone, we want to devalue what they are saying, doing or believing, not who they are. Mm -hmm. So -hmm. the idea is I don't want to devalue him specifically and be like, dude, you're sleeping with your girlfriend. You're a bad person. You're a bad Christian. You're not a Christian. You know, you're Mm -hmm. evil, you know, right. And that's what we see a lot. Condemnation. Rather, I want to devalue what he's doing. Hey, you know what you're doing is hurting God's heart. Wow, what you're doing is not valuable. Why do you see sleeping with your girlfriend as something valuable, as something okay to do? Mm -hmm. How can I come alongside you and show you the destruction and demean and devalue the action Mm -hmm. or the saying or the words or the belief that you are doing? Yeah. And I think that we as Christians, I see this especially politically, get so caught up in demeaning and devaluing people Mm -hmm. rather than what they're standing for. And in that, we sometimes are so focused on devaluing the person that people don't even see that we're devaluing what they're standing behind. They think that we're devaluing the person. They miss the concept of. But I think if we can learn as Christians, again, to devalue what people are standing for, yet still value that person as a human being, an image bearer of Christ, 
people are really going to be like, wow, Christians are so gentle. That's what I think gentleness is. Mm -hmm. I think Jesus mm -hmm. could speak, you know, you brood of vipers. You know, he could say, hey, what you guys are doing mm -hmm. is wrong. Yeah, you know, you guys are sinning. But, you know, he was he was showing them where they were falling short. Yeah. But he's still, I mean, he, the idea, one thing thing's crazy, he says, Jesus wept. I mean, he, he says, how oh, I long to gather you like a hen gathers her chicks, but you're not willing. I mean, he was talking about the Pharisees, he was talking about Israel. So you see that he still cared about the person. He didn't, he, he still saw them as image yeah. bearers of Christ, right? He still wanted to mm. restore them, right? He says he, he died for not only for us, but the whole world. But at the same time, he had to devalue uh, what they were standing behind. And that was Satan. Mm -hmm. So. And I feel like you have to look at if you were someone who was in sin and or because we've all been people who have been <laughs> confronted at times where it's like, why would you want to listen to a person that's just attacking you? Like, you're terrible. You're awful. Like, no hope. There's no hope. Mm -hmm. There's no like such worse. Some of you can change like and I will help you and all this stuff. Um, and also a lot of times like. I mean, there's just like little sayings, but like when you point your finger at someone, there's three fingers pointing back at you. Like, I mean, yes, mm. we are two are sinners. So you come with humility. It's like, yes, we all have sinned and fallen short, but I don't want you to be in this blatant sin. I don't want you to keep walking in it. So like, mm -hmm. I'll come alongside you and help you. But only the Holy Spirit can bring the conviction. Because sometimes mm -hmm. we try to convict people like, mm -hmm. how do you not see this as bad? Mm -hmm. But really praying before you go to talk to someone like, mm -hmm. and be trembling, like be afraid when you're talking to someone. Because it, it, it is something not like, oh, I should be afraid. But when people are so like, oh, I love doing it. Are you doing it just so that you're right? Or are you doing it to restore, like praying that they restore they come back to the Lord and my mom would always say you hate this sin like you hate the sin or people all say like love this sinner hate the sin but she's like never say oh I hate you or I, I hate this person or I hate what they're doing mm -hmm. say like or I hate them but it's like yeah you can hate the sin like you should be sick of the sin like that sin is is gross and it's everything that goes against God's word but the main thing that I, I realize like if you are coming to some, especially as a non-believer and trying to like say, oh, you're doing this, 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 and that wrong, you also need to remember that they're coming from a place of like, they're embarrassed. Like they probably are convicted, but if you just keep shoving in their face how terrible they are, they're probably embarrassed. Even if they're just a Mormon or even like Muslim or even in, in Catholicism to where they don't really have a personal relationship with God. I'm not saying like, I mean, I know people are in the Catholic church and they do a personal relationship with God and they're not into all like worshiping the saints and stuff. But I would say that's humbling. Like that's hard for someone right in that moment to be like, yes, I know what you're saying. So give them time and be in their city seating, like at least warn them and say it and don't try to be God is all I'm saying in all this. Like we can have wrong speech and how we come at, across, come to people because we are trying to play God instead of letting the Holy spirit work. Mm -hmm. and, and that's where I fall short. You know, sometimes as I realize that, and I, and I was taught that one time, like, you know, that Sandwich nobody it. has a good argument when they begin to attack your character. Yeah. You know, and that's why I see that all the time. Sometimes because we are going to get in com hard conversations of, hey, like what you're doing is wrong. It's hurting people. It's against the word of God. Yeah. And then people are like, well, you know what? You're stupid. And now mm. they begin to attack us. But <laughs> yeah, we, we don't want to stoop to that level of attacking people as they are as human beings. But we yeah. want to really focus on what the enemy has placed in their life and deceive them. And, and mm -hmm. so I have a couple of verses I want to share on that. Romans 3, 13 through 14. These are all New King James Version, except the last one. But their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of apps is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Again, they're all about they're all about practicing deceit and just having bitterness towards people, right? Uh, I believe that criticism, condemnation comes from a form of bitterness. Like we begin, the devil wants us to hate the person rather than the action, mm -hmm. right? If he can get us to hate the person, the action, now we are not walking the love of Christ. And now he's, he's making us lose mm -hmm. the, the heart of restoration. Yeah. And it's like participating in the c cancel culture that is super popular where mm -hmm. there's no grace if you make a mistake. Mm -hmm. And exactly. if, if we have that attitude, people won't confess their sin. People yeah. won't feel like they can change, you know, yeah. or they can, you know, ask God to help them overcome exactly what they're struggling with yeah and that exactly. goes with luke 6 37 the next verse new king james version judge not and you shall not be judged 
condemn not and you should not be condemned forgive Amen. and you will be forgiven you know and i think exactly. that we you know we should be willing to restore people like Amen. you were saying we we, we have a saying friends. here conviction for restoration not for condemnation mm-hmm. you know? and this is last one ephesians 4 2 new living translation i just read this with the guys last night and i was like oh we we're the guys were kind of doing a we will read like just a chapter together and talk about it so it's been encouraging but it says always be humble and gentle again gentle is that idea of being able to still s- help someone see the value of who God created them to be while also being able to point out uh, the area of their life that is not aligned with God and devaluing mm. like, hey, you know, this is this is destroying your life. Be patient with each other, right? Sometimes, like you were saying, Mariah, sometimes it takes a while for people to feel convicted about things mm-hmm. they should be convicted about. Mm-hmm. I know, like I said, reading these scriptures, I'm like, wow, like I, I, I'm learning how to be convicted about things. And sometimes it takes time. Making allowance for each other's faults because of your love. I see some people as I, again, I'm discipling and pouring into some people's lives. Um, I see them sometimes fall short, even though they're really trying to change. Or sometimes they just don't know yet. They don't they don't understand those convictions yet. And so we need to be patient and make allowance for them. The next one we have is grumbling and complaining. So that's the idea of you know, having dissatisfaction. I I think of just people that are constantly grumbling, constantly complaining. This goes along with a critical spirit where Mm -hmm. they can always find something wrong with things. You know, Mm -hmm. again, there's people that like, they they are able to point out the faults and things and that's good. But I think that this is the idea that like, they're always sniffing out something that is wrong and they find a reason to be negative. And I think that's rooted in a heart of lacking gratefulness it's in a heart of lacking trust in god Uh, you know i felt like i was complaining recently i just bought a house and you know i'm like praying to the lord for provision and and just like some things happen where i'm like oh but how am i gonna afford this and how am i and the lord's like why aren't you grateful like you know and i was just lacking trust in god i was lacking faith that god is good and he can He's good past my complaining. Mm-hmm. And the verse I have for that is Philippians 2.14. Two, my mom would sing, do everything without complaining or arguing. Philippians 2.14. <laughs> Amen. You know, and and I just, I, I just want to encourage you for those of you guys listening. Like, take that and really set aside all, for seven days. I don't know. Try to put that into practice just for seven days and see the difference in your life. Take that serious for seven days. Go, wow. I, I really want to catch myself and make that a daily practice yeah. of not grumbling or complaining. And, and, and mm-hmm. I really, I'm really working on that too. The next one is foolish talk, jesting or making or crudely making fun of people, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're, we're a young adult, you know, Calvary conversations. You'll probably even see it in our podcast. We poke fun at, e- fun at each other, mm-hmm. you know, and we love to joke around. Um, and I think that's all right. Like, I think, you know, God was, God had humor too, right? He made me, not to get it right. <laughs> but I <laughs> think that uh, it's okay to joke around. That's one thing. Like, there are a lot of fun things we can joke about. Like, I love Tim Hawkins. I think he does an amazing yeah. job with clean humor. But I also think that we can take things too far. And sometimes our crude humor or jesting can sometimes poke people in a way that really actually mm. hurts them. Yeah. Or actually really devalues them in a way where it is like slander. Yeah. You know, sometimes jesting and making fun of people, like joking, can almost become a, uh, a way of um, slandering people in some ways. And so I just think that's something that we should really see is we need to be, we can't be apathetic. We need to sometimes be sensitive to realize that hmm, that joke is going a little too far. That actually might really draw and tug on some things that that person is really struggling with Mm -hmm. and i need to be sensitive to that that can be a little too coarse right Mm -hmm. it's like sometimes you know it's fun going down a bumpy road but sometimes if you're going if you make that road too bumpy with your jokes you can blow a tire you know and that's where like i think it's fun you know we can kind of you know get bumpy again that's not flirting with um we don't want to flirt with uh dirty language but Mm -hmm. i'm just saying like sometimes we can poke at each other and have fun but we have to be careful that our sarcasm or our crude humor Mm -hmm. doesn't get too crude or coarse to where now it's hurting people or going into areas Mm -hmm. that are not uh, not good yeah and a lot of times i i notice what i do is i say something like a joke and then 
people are like, whoa, 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 like that was, that was mean or something. And I was like, mm-hmm. I'm just kidding. And then the Bible says in Proverbs 26, 18 through 19 says, just as damaging as a madman shooting a deadly weapon is someone who lies to a friend and then says, I was only joking. Like we say that all the time, like just mm-hmm. kidding, JK, LOL. But it's like, we shouldn't be joking like that. Like there's, there's a lot of times where I've like said things that it 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 even was i don't know like that's saying if if someone who is lying but you're saying something that is truthful but you're like thinking if i put it as a joke it won't hurt as bad but mm-hmm. it does and that's where we need to be careful my mom would always say like don't poke fun at other people like if you're joking maybe like make fun of yourself but mm-hmm. even be careful making fun of yourself because God created you. So you're like making fun of your like body or mm. all the stuff you don't like. And it's something you also can't change or someone else. Like don't joke about it. Yeah. And, and another thing that we're, where we can as young adults and stuff, like the videos we watch, the things we share, mm. the humor is like, it's not funny. Like there's a lot of things where maybe when you're in high school and always, always the guys who are the most perverted and they showed all the, gross i don't know just these videos and thinking um comedy central and stuff were funny it's not funny like it's there are things that if the lord and i know people always like wwjd or like what would jesus do or what if he was right there but truly again back to the holy spirit what would we do would we be laughing at something like that if it's making fun of someone if it's um something that's sexual there's a lot of people who make sexual jokes we, we need to stay away from all those things. And I think, like, mm-hmm. to go along with that, I think you have a really good point. Like, what we also find funny. And that's something I'm really working on is I used to I used to laugh at certain jokes. And I'm like, I shouldn't laugh at that anymore. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. I, I really, by the grace of God, try to be quiet because we can train our humor bone yeah. to like the wrong things. <laughs> you know, I know the humor <laughs> bone, the humor muscle. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. But humor I is. think there's uh, one thing the Lord's put on my heart is, is the Lord's like, Dave, there's so, like, I've made the world so fun. And there are so many clean things you can joke about. Why flirt or even try to, why go to those things, you know? And, Mm -hmm. you know, your mom, Mariah, really taught me, like, something one time. I remember one time when I first came to this church, you know, I went to Hooters and, you know, (laughs) And, you know, and it's that's a long story, but essentially, like David you know, was the guy going to Hooters for the the, the wings. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So <laughs> there were there were things like you know there were things that I was doing that were a little edgy, you know, and not to condemn anybody that goes to Hooters, but again, just the way that I was doing things. You're and not so, just there for the chicken breast, so you got to be careful. Yeah. <laughs> There's other things that are not good and bad for your eyes. They're it's perfect. exactly it's yes, perfect. and so. But I remember one time. Um, we were like all out to dinner at Applebee's and I was with Pastor Greg and I made this joke and it was just a really coarse joke. And I looked over at Mariah's mom, mm-hmm. Teresa, who's just a, just a very pure woman and just loved God. And her face was just like, I mean, <laughs> she was Blamed. so uncomfortable. And I remember just like, she's like, who's going to tell Like she Someone's just like, she did not. I mean, she was so like, taken aback and just like i mean she she Mm -hmm. like it looked like she just felt so dirty just being around me Mm -hmm. and i looked at her and i just seeing like how much she you know she wanted to be pure she wanted to really be close to god and Mm -hmm. and speaking like that especially like me saying the character that i was a christian everything like that really hurt her and Mm -hmm. it really like made her uneasy and i realized like that's how the holy spirit is with us Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm when we uh when we make crude jokes when we speak that way and and then that that really stuck with me to where i realized like i was like all right lord like i really want to clean my language up i really like again i may not use a curse word per se but sometimes what i can speak about are things that are inappropriate or dirty and just things that are perverted they're twisted Mm -hmm. they're they're things i should never joke about god's creation in Mm -hmm. you know in certain ways and and i think we need to know like what those boundaries are and 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 just think god what hurts your heart but Mm -hmm. no yeah on that point you can make others stumble with what you're Mm -hmm. joking about so you really have to be careful like you don't know who in the room is struggling with something you're joking Mm -hmm. about and yeah we're supposed to reflect god's character like so something to be aware about Amen. yeah and that's i want to share this verse it's 
Ephesians 5, 4. Uh, this is the NASB 1995. I don't know why they're so switched around, but... And there must be no filthiness and silly talk or coarse jesting, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. It's funny, that word, I believe it's silly talk, literally means talking like a moron. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, I, the Lord really humbled me on that. The Lord's like, you joke about things that are perverted, like you're you're speaking in a way that's just silly, like that's not glorifying to me. Like it does not build up anybody. And like you were saying, Christy, like I just need to be aware Again, it, it doesn't have to necessarily be a curse word to really be something that can cause people to stumble. And, yeah. mm-hmm. um, and that goes with the, the, the last topic, which is foul talk, which is just inappropriate talk, making light of discussing immoral things that should not be talked about. And again, this is just, I want to emphasize this, like if you struggle with these things or if you're feeling convicted about these things, again, I'm talking about it right now. And I'm like, man, I, yeah, Lord, I want to work mm-hmm. on that in my life. What I realize is, I've been corrupted by the world. I mean, I've been corrupted by my flesh. Like I was taught in the world that joking about these things and talking about these things is funny and it's fine. And come on, everybody's doing it on Comedy Central, like you were saying, Mariah, you know, and and I think that as Christians, you know, when we want to be close to God, like these things that I used to laugh about, I'm like, oh, wait a second, like that's not really edifying. Like, whoa, like if I'm like, you know, again, I I think of Trinity too, like Trinity, like really wants to be pure, you know, she was raised by, she was raised by Teresa too. And like, you know, when I say those things too, sometimes too, she's like, what, you know? And and I think, you know, that idea that like, you know, younger, like when I work with the youth group kids, like there's things that I really want to model good edifying language. And Mm -hmm. the idea, if we can separate ourselves from the world's humor, and like, like, again, I like Tim Hawkins because he's mm-hmm. he has good Christian humor. He shows people, hey, Christians can be funny. Christians mm-hmm. can be fun. Like there are so many things that we can absolutely, like we can have a blast of a time mm-hmm. without having to go into filthy talk or Perfect. foul language. Mm. Amen. And where us as Christians have to be careful too is if we see someone who's coming and are like joining our friend group or being around us and they're doing that, it's how we are going to approach them in that. Are we going to say like, we don't, no, don't do that. Don't talk that way and make them feel like mm. just get so embarrassed or they probably never want to come back or lovingly take them aside and say, hey, like, I just, I don't think you should say that. Like we always say that with our youth group kids, like we give the rules ahead of time so they know like, no foul language and this is what it is and all that because a lot of these kids that's all they hear if you are in the world and you're at a public school or just at a job you're gonna hear that all the time for some people it's like every other word that's just that's how my dad was before he got saved it was every other word was f word or something like that and i i'm around like even my neighbors at the in the apartment complex and they talk that way and if i'm just like making a face or like oh, I can't listen to you because we're supposed to be in this world, but not of it. Like we're, we can't escape that. We're going to hear cuss words. My dad would always say that to Trinity. It's okay. Just because you hear someone cussing doesn't, (laughs) you have to freak out. Like there are people in the world, but when they come into the church, we want to lovingly let them know, like sandwich it. My mom would say, you encourage them like, Hey, we're so happy you're here. And like, I don't want to say this at all to make you feel like I'm upset at you or anything, but, and then give the, the thing of, hey, I just feel like the, what you're saying, you know, when you're when you keep saying like JC, like saying the Lord's name in vain, that's say, um, saying the Lord's name in vain. And the Bible says this here not to do that. But I will help hold you accountable, like in a loving way if you want. But just saying just be careful around everyone else doing that, but not to do that to make them feel like, oh, my goodness, like I can't hang around these people because i'm just going to always stumble them but lovingly help people with that and we've had people in our youth group who like at times they slip and we lovingly like hey hey we just say hey and they're like oh yeah yeah." and so it's not to shame them um because guilt is okay we're all guilty but to shame them and make them feel terrible like tis tis like we're pure over here and our words are amazing and your words are filthy like some people that's just what they're around and it's a habit. And so it's hard to break it. So just to love them and help them out of it. And to go along with that. So, you know, being a coach, 
I have these kids that come from such different households mm -hmm. and I have kids that come from different schools. Well, their parents are probably. Yeah. yeah. And like when they get into our football team, like there is a culture of how we talk mm -hmm. that I really try to emphasize because I really believe like the Bible says, like the way we talk to each other goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And so like I have kids yelling at each other and I go, whoa, hey, like that's, you know, don't yell at them and demean them and devalue them, right? Change your language, like encourage them, give them hope, Sing like we're to talking them. about. No, I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> Make it a musical. Make it a you know, but I think, <laughs> like, can do that. again, they begin, there's a culture of words and ways that we talk to each mm -hmm. other that we've really been working on the team. That now, when new people come in, the way they talk doesn't really fit in, and the others model this behavior that they begin to follow, and now they mm. begin to kind of buy into the language that we have with the team. Mm. And that's what I really hope I see with our young adult group. Like, there is a language that we use with each other and encouraging each other in our church that when people come into our church, they kind of see this modeling of, and, and by the grace and strength of God, it's the Holy Spirit working in us, I hope, where we really exemplify like what it means to talk to each other and people kind of buy into that over time. And I think that's the other thing. There are times I think we do have to kind of point out things, especially if someone's willfully doing it, then we need to be a little more stricter. But if it's slipping out and then somebody's like, oh, the I, first time I didn't don't realize. Even know. Yeah. Yeah. Some people like, again, some people like don't even know no. they've grown up like this is normal to them. And, and yeah. Christ is going to teach them a new normal. Like, hey, yeah, I know you thought that was normal, but in Christ, you, there's a new standard and it's way better, you know. So with that, I have a couple verses. And then we have to kind of go fast. Yeah, I was gonna going to. We can talk get... about gospel and sin in another video. But... Yeah. So, but I'm going to uh, give our conclusion. That's Ephesians 5, 10 through 12. And this is where I think the real heart of it is. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Amen. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Again, that, that talks about you, like talking and speech and how, what we say. Instead, expose them, right? Like we're doing right now. We're trying to expose where people, especially Christians, have been kind of lackadaisical, where we've kind of been like not as serious about language. We're trying to expose that and saying, hey, I think these are, if we evaluate what it means to be a Christian, we should take these more serious. It is shameful even to talk about things that ungodly people do in mm. secret. And I think and the last one is Matthew 5, 8. It said, God blesses those who are pure, for they will see God. And I think that's what it really is. We, as you were saying, right, we really want to do, uh, we really want to please God's heart. Mm -hmm. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. And that's what I think it really is. And again, we're not saying that you need to start having perfect language. I was just saying it before this podcast. I was like, I'm still working mm -hmm. on training my language in all these areas, right? Like we were talking about slander and gossip and making fun of people. And like, I can sometimes get caught up in that. Mm -hmm. And I think that I think that, you know, I, I, if we're really wanting to pursue God's heart, we're going to take it serious in training our language. And I promise this, I really believe this, that if we can model the language that Christ wants us to have, yeah, it's going to really build up the church. It's going to exactly. really build up each other. And in that, we're going to have really deep relationships with each other because people are going to be like, it's going to be like, man, this is so nice. I love being in a place that is different from the world mm -hmm. and how they talk to each other. So. Okay. With that, that's all we got. Mm -hmm. Ryan, if you want to wrap it up. Yes. If you haven't already, please make sure to like this video, share this video. And also, if you would like to listen to us on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, you guys can do that or wherever you get your podcasts. Just type in Calvary Conversations. You can also follow us on Instagram at Calvary Conversations for our behind the scenes. And this is an, a listener supported podcast. So if you would like to support this podcast, you guys can do that in the description below that says donate we're gonna do more podcasts answering your questions probably one on gossip and slander and more of the tongue and the power that is in that and just being careful what we say and i just want to encourage you to fill yourself with the holy spirit fill yourself with things that are pure lovely right admirable to think upon things like that and if you're around things that are filthy or gross try to take that out of your life and if you're around people like that and you're not able to escape it just pray pray in your mind pray for them and let the holy spirit just shine through you to be that example so we thank you so much for all your support and love and we'll see you next week thanks so much and god bless